Welcome to Crime Scene X. Today's video will explore three terrifying stories that involve basements. If you enjoy, leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more stories. Sit back and enjoy today's video. The basement of our new house always gave me an uneasy feeling. It wasn't just the stale air, or the way sound seemed to die as soon as you stepped down the creaky wooden stairs. There was something else. An inexplicable sense of dread that washed over me every time I ventured below. My wife joked about it, calling me a scaredy cat, but even she avoided going down there more than necessary. One evening, when a fuse blew, leaving half of our house in darkness, the task of replacing it fell to me. The fuse box was, of course, in the basement. With only a flashlight to guide me, I made my way down, the beam of light bouncing off the walls and casting eerie shadows. I tried to focus on the task at hand, telling myself I was being ridiculous. There was nothing down here but boxes and old furniture. As I reached the fuse box and began searching for the blown fuse, I heard it. A soft scraping noise, like metal on concrete. I froze, the sound cutting through the silence with alarming clarity. It was coming from the far corner of the basement, a part cluttered with old heavy furniture and stacks of forgotten books. Telling myself it was just the house settling, I quickly replaced the fuse and turned to leave. But then I saw something that stopped me in my tracks. A small, narrow door that I had never noticed before, almost hidden behind an old dresser. How had I missed it during our initial exploration of the house? Curiosity overcame fear, and I moved the dresser aside, my hands shaking slightly. The door was old, the wood swollen with moisture, making it difficult to open. When I finally managed to pull it ajar, a foul, musty odor hit me, and I gagged, covering my mouth and nose with my arm. The space beyond the door was small, more of a crawl space than a room, filled with old newspapers and something else. I shone my flashlight inside, and that's when I saw them. Bones. Human bones, scattered among the detritus some still with remnants of clothing clinging to them. Panic surged through me, a scream caught in my throat. My first instinct was to run, to get as far away from this house of horrors as possible. But then, reality set in. These were human remains, and they needed to be reported to the police. The following hours were a blur of police officers, crime scene tape, and questions. Questions I had no answers to. It turned out the bones were old, very old, likely there long before we bought the house. The previous owners were questioned, but they claimed ignorance, having never ventured into that part of the basement. We moved out shortly after, unable to shake the horror of what I had found. The basement, which had once seemed merely unpleasant, now felt tainted. The house remains unsold, a silent sentinel guarding its grim secret. The job offer was too good to pass up caretaker for an expansive, albeit aging, property in the countryside, with a generous salary and living accommodations provided. The catch? The previous caretaker had left abruptly, no explanation given, leaving the basement in a state of disarray that needed sorting. I didn't think much of it. I was handy and needed the job. The house was as grand as promised, though it wore its age like a heavy cloak, with creaking floors and a persistent draft. But it was the basement that held an air of unwelcome. The first time I descended the stairs, the light bulb flickered erratically, casting unsettling shadows across the damp stone walls. The air was cooler here, carrying a faint, unidentifiable odor that made me pause. It was a mix of must and something else. Something... off. Tasked with cleaning and inventory, I began sorting through boxes and old furniture covered in years of dust and neglect. It was mundane work, and my initial unease began to fade, until I found the door. Tucked away under the staircase, behind a stack of old, moth-eaten blankets, was a small wooden door I hadn't noticed before. It was locked, but the key was hanging on a nail just above the doorframe, as if waiting for me. Curiosity overpowered caution, and I unlocked the door. It swung open with a creak, revealing a narrow tunnel that extended beyond the reach of my flashlight. The air that emanated from the tunnel was colder, laced with that same unsettling odor, now stronger, more pungent. I should have closed the door then, locked it and left it for good, but the mystery was too compelling. I convinced myself I was just being thorough, doing the job I was hired to do. So I ventured into the tunnel, the beam of my flashlight bouncing off the damp walls. The tunnel led to a small room, 
and what I found there haunts me to this day. Shelves lined the walls, but they weren't filled with old books or household items. They were filled with jars. Jars containing... things. Unidentifiable things suspended in formaldehyde. Twisted shapes that my mind refused to fully comprehend. And on a table in the center of the room, a collection of surgical tools, laid out with care, as if recently used. I felt a rush of horror and revulsion, my stomach turning as I realized the implications. This wasn't just a caretaker's basement. It was a hidden chamber for unspeakable acts. I backed away, my mind screaming for me to run, to escape this nightmare. I don't remember the run back up the tunnel or how I found the strength to barricade the door. I called the police, my hands shaking so badly I could barely hold the phone. The investigation that followed revealed the gruesome truth. The previous caretaker had been living a double life, one that involved illegal experiments and unspeakable crimes. The jars contained remains of small animals, and the tools were used for their dissection and preservation. I left the job, the house, and the countryside behind, but I can't escape the memories. The sight of those jars, the smell of that room, and the realization of what had taken place there haunt me. I avoid basements now, no matter how benign they seem, because I know the horrors that can hide in the darkness, waiting behind a door that should never be opened. In the dim light of the basement, the air felt thick, a palpable layer of dust and neglect clinging to everything. I'd come down here to search for an old family album my mother had mentioned, but the cluttered, forgotten space seemed to swallow any sense of purpose I had. The only sound was the distant, muffled hum of the house above, making me feel as if I'd stepped into another world, isolated and unseen. As I navigated through the maze of boxes and old furniture, a sense of unease settled over me. The basement, with its concrete walls and cold floor, seemed to hold secrets, memories of the past that weren't mine to uncover. The light from the single bulb overhead was too weak, throwing long shadows that played tricks on my eyes. I thought I saw something move in the corner of the room, but when I looked directly, there was nothing. I found the album on a shelf, hidden behind jars of old paint that looked like they hadn't been touched in decades. Relief washed over me, the familiar faces and the photographs grounding me reminding me of the world above. But as I turned to leave, I heard it. A soft, dragging sound, like something being pulled across the concrete floor. My heart raced, and for a moment I froze, straining my ears. The sound stopped as suddenly as it had started, and I told myself it was nothing, just the house settling or some small animal that had found its way inside. I moved quickly now, eager to leave the oppressive space. Then I saw it, a shadow that wasn't cast by anything in the room, a dark, human-shaped absence of light that seemed to hover near the stairs. Panic surged through me, my mind racing with explanations that all fell short of logical. There were no windows down here, no other sources of light, nothing that could cast such a shadow. As I stood there, the shadow moved. It was subtle, just a slight shift, but it was enough to send me sprinting towards the stairs. I didn't look back, didn't dare to, my only thought to get out of that basement. I could hear my own ragged breaths, the pounding of my heart, and behind me, the soft sound of something following. I burst into the light of the main floor, the normalcy of the house a stark contrast to the darkness below. I slammed the basement door shut and locked it, leaning against it as if I could hold back the darkness with my own body. I never went back down there. I couldn't. The basement remained locked, a part of the house we all silently agreed to forget, but sometimes, Late at night, I'd lie awake and wonder about the shadow. What was it? A trick of the light? A figment of my imagination? Or something else? Something lurking in the forgotten corners of our homes, waiting in the silence? Thanks for watching. See you all next time.